So this is what we have so far. Um, you know, kind of a, a basic page that'll be your portfolio. Um, when you mouse over, you have kind of links. We don't have any assignments yet, but we'll keep adding to this. Uh, one of the things I'm gonna show you is um, how to put a full screen background on our page. So not only are we gonna make a full screen background, but we're gonna make this gray area a little transparent. And then this area, the gray area, a little transparent. So, um, and then we'll probably change uh, the, the paragraph text into something uh, much better. So, um, you'll notice though that I, I did grab another font face um, and put that in. I just kind of changed my at font face in my CSS. I gave it a, a hot word some short word or some word that meant uh, load that file. And then in my coding, uh, right here, I called that font, uh, that word, sanitation or sensation. So um, I, when it loads the uh, large heading tag in my, uh, on my web page, it'll see that the font family that I want is sensation and then up here basically anytime it sees the word sensation here it's gonna load this file to uh, include that file or that font for that heading or text okay and that's how it works now again what I'm gonna do is as I said I'm gonna show you how to put a um, a full screen background on uh, there's a great site. The internet is the greatest resource we have for uh, learning, especially for web. Um, there's a great site called CSS Tricks, and they do a really good job of showing you quickly how to perfect, uh, put a perfect full page background image on. And here it is. You just do a search for uh, full screen background or go to CSS Tricks, and you can do the search right here. And uh, anyways, here's the page, and they do a great uh, job of showing you different ways to do it. Um, there's the, the first way, though, is a great way. It's all CSS3 stuff. It's brand new kind of stuff in a way. And um, they're, they're actually talking to the HTML tag. So remember, in, in web design, we put everything up in sequential order in between the body tags, all the, the HTML, that stuff with the angle brackets, and then we talk to it in the CSS, okay? And we design our pages with CSS, not with um, HTML. We just throw stuff up, and then we lay it out and color it and do all this cool stuff with the CSS. That's web design. So um, this is a rare thing, but they found that if they talk to the HTML tag, um, they're placing an image and they're fixing it right here in the center and they're not repeating it so if you have a small little pattern uh, you can repeat it uh, I think I show you that in another video but I can show you that uh, and then this right here webkit background dash webkit background is dash webkit is for Safari dash Moz is for Firefox dash O is for Opera and the regular one is for, I'm guessing, um, Google Chrome and uh, probably Google Chrome. I, I kind of forget what the regular one is for. But the main one we're going to work with is WebKit uh, and maybe Moz. We always look at your stuff in Safari, so just think about dash WebKit when you see that. And WebKit is a script or large or scripts to do all these cool things in CSS3 that you could never do before. It kind of comes built in with the new Safari or new Firefox or new Opera or new uh, Google Chrome. So anyways, um, we're going to call to that and say, hey, we want the background size to cover the complete area. So anyways, all you have to do is find this coding right here. I'm going to highlight it and copy it you know I don't have to retype it and I'm gonna go into my um, my CSS here and again CSS is in between the style tags and um, let me put I'll keep my at font face up top but right underneath that I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna 
do it right here and paste it. And again, I just pasted that. Now it's looking for a folder called images. We're not going to have that. We're just going to have, we just need the name of the file. Because our web page is going to be in the same location as this image, and it'll be called bg.jpg, it'll find it instantly. Again, if we had a, if we had a, uh, a folder, we could put the name of it like images and then a slash and that would say hey computer wherever this web page is there's a folder there called images and inside of it there's an image and load it okay but again we're not going to do that right now so let me go let me go ahead and save it now let me show you uh, where are we here so here is my folder uh, in web design, especially in this class, you want to keep it everything very organized. Organization is key to making web design simpler. And there's nothing worse than not being organized and trying to find your files or working on an, a, a different file that you think you're working on. So um, what I did was I made a folder called Portfolio. I have my web page here. I have this file that I'm going to use for background. It's a picture of the ocean with the sun setting. I have my weird image called mrg.jpg, and then I have that um, that font face file that I downloaded. Well, that's and that's it. That's all I need for this web page. So um, I'm going to double click it, and for some reason uh, the image isn't showing up. Let me see what's going on here. Let me keep that open here. Um, so bg.jpg Okay. Hmm. Let me open it with Safari. Oh, okay. It's because I have a body color for the whole page <laughs> okay so so I have to get rid of some coding here again I'm talking to the body right here and putting a, a background color I don't need that okay so I'm just gonna keep that right there I am gonna say since we're here I'm gonna say margin uh, colon zero oh sorry zero and then padding zero and the reason I'm gonna do that is Right here, you see this little space that by default, there's 10 pixels of padding around the body. And um, I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to reload my page. And sure enough, there it is. Okay. Now I have some color changes to make and all of that. And I need to change the color of this right here. But, you know, it's kind of cool. And the thing is with that coating, if I change the size, see that the image kind of keeps with it. Okay, I just wanted to show you that. So um, now what we're going to do is, um, that's the background image. I'm just going to quickly use something with CSS3 called RGBA. And I'm going to say the background is going to be a, a value of red, green, blue, and then alpha or transparency and with CSS3 it's something new I can choose a color get its RGB value and then make it transparent from number one uh, a one is no tra uh, all no transparency you can't see through it it's a solid color to point one which means you can see through a lot of it you can barely see it so we probably want like point four or point five and you'll see what I mean so I'm going to go back to my coding here, and I'm going to go down to, um, let me show you in the HTML. Right here, we have this div called box that's holding both the image and the paragraphs of text. Okay? So it's this stuff right here, okay? And it's a gray now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my... my um, CSS in between the style tags and right now we have a we have a, a, a background color 
of 999, which is, looks like it must be a dark gray. I'm going to say background RGBA. And then in parentheses, this is something we haven't done, I'm going to give it a value. Now you can go to color lovers, and instead of the hexadecimal color number, those six digit letter number combinations that mean a specific color, they will also give you the RGB value, the, uh, the amount of red, the amount of um, blue, and the amount of green uh, to make up a color. Okay, I have red, green, and blue. Okay, so I'm going to just guess. I'm going to say one, two, five, comma. So that's the red value. One, two, five, which is the amount of uh, blue value. And then one, two, five, oh, one, two, five, which is the amount of um, blue value. Excuse me. The first one's red, <laughs> the second one's green, and the third one's blue. Now this fourth number, again, is from 0.1 to 1. And I'm going to go about 0.4 and then do my other uh, parentheses. And that's going to be the background value of that div we call box. Okay, let me save it and let me go over here and show you. Now here's what it looks like without me reloading it. And I'm going to reload. And now you'll see that it's kind of a light gray. And you can get you know, any color you want and lighten it up. And notice that you can, um, you can see the picture behind. Now the thing is, you want to get it to a certain place where you can read the text um, easily. And this text right now, because it's black, uh, on an image, it has an image behind it. It's kind of hard to read, so we'll we'll change that a little bit. Um, we're also going to do the same thing for these grays, and let me do it right now. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk to the thing in my HTML that is making this 999, this dark gray right here, on my links, and I can make that transparent. So I'm going to go back to the coding and let me see what is making that um, that gray so here's the border there's no color on the a tag it's probably on the ul okay so it's right here the whole unordered list has a background color of a certain hexadecimal color number close to uh, dark gray. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to do the same thing. RG, RGBA. <laughs> okay. And again, 1, 2, 5. That's the amount of red. 1, 2, 5. The amount of green. And 1, 2, 5. Uh, the amount of blue. And then 0.4. And in parentheses, again, I have a semicolon at the end to end the line. And I need to save it. And then I'm going to update my page, which I have open. And sure enough, it just kind of shows you, you know, what's, what's possible. It's pretty cool and how easy you can do that. Again, you couldn't do that before. You had to make it in Photoshop or Fireworks and then bring that in as a background image. It was kind of a trick. And now... With CS3, it's just one line of code, so CSS3. So again, um, th let's do one more thing before I end this video. I know it's a longer one, and I'm talking a little bit too much, but let me go down to my P tag here. And again, I'm doing all this stuff just in CSS, and I'm just creating a laundry list of stuff in between the curly brackets on each tag that I have in my HTML. So... Um, let me go to my P tag down here. And I have font size 1.4. Let's make that 1.6, I guess. Okay. Text align justify. That makes it nice uh, straight lines on the sides of the paragraph. And let's also go uh, font dash family colon. And let's try Verdana. And then let's do a color. Um, let's go white. You can say white or just three Fs. And let me save it. I don't know really what this is going to look like. OK, 
Okay. So, you know, I made it a little bit bigger. Uh, we got an issue here. I got to figure out what's going on there. But you want it so your text is readable. Okay. So, again, I uh, just wanted to kind of show you some stuff um, before we start adding. And we'll, we'll kind of change some things around here. Um, this HR. Uh, first of all, the text is not the proper color. It's still being lost. I could probably um, go back into my uh, my box where I'm talking to the box right here. And instead of 0.4, I could say 0.6. And it would make it um, just a little darker if I reload it. Okay. Again, you want to make the text easy to read. That's why you have text anyways. And you want somebody to skim through your text quickly and find what they want. So again, there's some design issues that we'll, um, we'll change throughout the, the course, but we'll do it live. But here's just the basic page. Thanks.